The state of Missouri is truly fortunate to have highly skilled and passionate educators to present, to represent us as State Teachers of the Year. Ms. Shelley Parks of the Francis House School District is certainly one of those. She has been a tremendous advocate for the teaching profession, and we sincerely thank her for her service. Please join me in welcoming and honoring Missouri's 2019 State Teacher of the Year, Ms. Shelley Parks. Good evening. I can't think of a better way to spend a Monday. How about you? Tonight I was asked to share my journey and year of serving as 2019 Missouri Teacher of the Year. And while I will admit it feels a little awkward to stand up here and talk about my experiences this year um, and some of the work I was fortunate to do, if there's one message that I've tried to share everywhere I've gone, it's that we need to elevate the teaching profession. So if I'm not willing to stand up here and do that, I sure can't ask others to. I'd like to take you to where my classroom experience began, which was in Bucharest, Romania. If you would have told me that I would have gone from that rundown classroom in a non-air conditioned church building that sat right next to a brothel to standing in the Oval Office with 56 incredible state teachers of the year, including territories, I would have called you absolutely crazy. And yet that's exactly what happened. So I'd love to share a little bit about my story with you and how that came to be. So there I was, minding my business in my classroom and teaching kids, okay? That's what we do. And I knew I'd been awarded my building teacher of the year and district and a regional teacher of the year for St. Louis. Um, and that was all an incredible honor and surprise to me. But I will tell you that after my interview in Jeff City for Missouri Teacher of the Year, this moment never occurred to me that it was possible. Nonetheless, I walked into my building's gymnasium a few days later, and it was full of 1,700 cheering kids, the band playing our fight song, cheerleaders waving pom-poms, and a bunch of very official-looking people who I now know um, <laughs> to find out I was named 2019 Missouri Teacher of the Year. If that wasn't surprise enough, fast forward three weeks after being named Teacher of the Year to find out we were expecting our fourth Missouri public school student being born into our family in the middle of 2019. To say this year has been a whirlwind in the very best way is an understatement. When I tell you that this honor was an absolute surprise, I truly mean that. So in the words that follow, when I tell you the opportunities I was given by both Desi and Dr. Mary Hendricks Harris in the Francis House School District, please know I don't view these experiences as things I did, but as gifts I was given. This year, I had an opportunity to speak to a lot of audiences. And when I was talking to current teachers in the profession or teachers interested in joining us, I shared the joys of teaching through comparing teaching and traveling and using a metaphor. Um, and it was just fun to, sit, to fun to share, and it showcased the joys of a profession I truly treasure. When I talked to school leaders, I shared the fact that sometimes education goes viral for the wrong reasons, and it's up to all of us to make sure that it goes viral for good reasons. I encourage that group to share stories of positive experiences in their schools, and in doing so, I shared stories of wonderful teachers and students across our great state, elevating students and elevating the teaching profession. I was also able to share with leaders across the United States the importance of elevating teacher voice around issues surrounding recruitment and retention. Missouri has started a lot of good work in these areas, but our nation is experiencing a crisis when it comes to teacher shortage, and we have to bring teachers to the table to continue our work on this. So I didn't just present a pretty picture of education. There are hardships we have to voice in order to improve the profession and promote change. So when I met with policymakers this year, I tried to share some of the struggles of our profession in hopes we can make some changes to make educating more attractive and increase the number of people joining us. Our students deserve this. Not only was I given a chance to do some speaking this year, I was also gifted other opportunities I'd like to share. There was a lot of celebration that took place this year, just like what we're doing here for these wonderful educators tonight. They made a billboard with my face. Who saw that coming? Um, the Chiefs game, we got to, I got to be on the field with the um, Kansas State Teacher of the Year. Lots of articles, lots of radio interviews. 
But my message has always been, start with celebrating, move toward elevating. And that would be my encouragement to school and district leaders here tonight. Please use these highly qualified teachers and their expertise in your schools and in your districts. Let their voices be part of the conversation. I assure you, they appreciate the celebration. And a certificate and a plaque is a wonderful gift. But more wonderful is letting their voices help inform decisions that impact their students and their classrooms. A seat at the table was another gift this year, and the Francis Howell School District in the state of Missouri did just that for me by allowing me to serve on many um, decision-making committees. We also got to meet with policymakers. When the State Teachers of the Year and I spent a week in D.C., I got to meet with Missouri policymakers, but we also got to hear from members of the Education Committee. And nothing compares to the learning and training we were given this year. Locally, we were trained at the Teachers Academy, and if you're an administrator in the room tonight and you agreed to let a teacher attend this year, thank you. I hope the sacrifice you've made to allow this repays huge dividends for your staff and your students. We were also able to train at Google headquarters and go to space camp, my dream since I've been a little girl. One of the gifts of this journey um, has brought more clarity to the issues that I would love to advocate for. So whether I was talking to state leaders, superintendents, school boards, principals, you get the point. Um, I was talking about one of two things, recruiting a teacher workforce that more closely reflects the demographics of our students through Grow Your Own programs. Thank you, thank you. And retaining teachers in a profession by way of caring about working conditions. Specifically, as it pertains to teachers who are parents, a portion of the teaching workforce we end up losing due to low pay paired with costly early childhood, poor maternity and paternity leave policies, and a lack of support at times for nursing mothers. The national organization that runs Teacher of the Year program asked each state teacher to put into numbers the work they did this year. Please know I don't share this to glorify anything I have done. I share this to say, I visited 14 colleges, but if Google's correct, there are 67. I visited 16 states, I gave a lot of keynotes, and I drove nearly 11,000 miles. But there were so many times I could not be two places at once. Imagine the work we could accomplish if we were able to elevate many teachers' voices and what that would do to elevate the profession. So when you look at all those incredible opportunities this year, my thought, and it's not unique to me, is I wish every teacher could feel this appreciated and supported. And for those of you being honored tonight, I have a confession to make. I wish it hadn't taken me being named Missouri Teacher of the Year to embrace opportunities I now realize I had all along. So I would encourage the regional teachers of the year and the finalists in the room tonight, you can and should have these things. Recognition is tonight, but don't stop there. Figure out your platform and your purpose and start sharing it where you can, in conferences, through social media. Attend Teachers Academy if you're able, and spend time learning and networking with teachers across the region and the state. Reach out to your legislators and have conversations with them. Tell your student and colleague stories. And offer your school, your district, and even the state your voice on committees that will impact change and improvements. We need you all doing this, not just one person. Misty is great, but she is one. Together, you are 35. How much more impactful will you be collectively? Because the real question is, what if, not what if all teachers felt this way, but what if all students had these type of teachers who were highly qualified, fairly compensated, looked like them, had a voice, had leadership training, had great working conditions, felt like they could teach anywhere? If this is going to be our reality, we have to work together to spark conversations that encourage these improvements. I'm going to paraphrase Commissioner Van Dieven here. When talking about her job, she said, I go to work to take care of teachers so that they can take care of our students. The following are teachers across our nation who have shown you how long they've been teaching, and they're from across the states. They deserve us having these conversations too because we take care of teachers so they can take care of students. Speaking of students, which is where I'd like to end tonight, it's the reason that we're here. If you came into my classroom before I became Teacher of the Year, you would have seen this phrase on a post-it front and center on my desk. If it's not good enough for my own children, it's not good enough for my students. 
This always has been and will continue to be my philosophy of education. It gives me purpose and hope, but it also serves as a reminder our work is not finished. Parents for the first time since 1969 in a PDK poll are saying our profession is not good enough for their kids. And this makes me think of my own. Now the two on the left are still debating professional baseball and becoming a pirate. But the one on the right is absolutely convinced her calling is to become a teacher. And I'm not just about making our profession better for my own children. This profession needs to be elevated for my colleagues, my children, and my students. Meet some of the students I've met along the way this year who are going to be joining us. We need to elevate the profession for Elise, who wants to teach third grade, and for Abby, who wants to teach first grade. For Eric, who wants to teach high school social studies, and for Austin, who wants to be a music educator. As you can see, this past year was full of incredible opportunities, but they didn't come without sacrifice. Teachers feel and face this struggle daily. My encouragement to every educator comes from part of my daughter's personal narrative from her English class. She came home one day and told me she was writing her narrative um, in English about the day that I was named Teacher of the Year. Now, I thought this was super sweet until I read the whole paragraph that talked about how sad she was that I was gone a lot this year. Talk about mom guilt. However, I read farther, and this last line describes exactly why I do this. I was really sad because my mom left sometimes, but I realized, we'll work on spelling, that it is not her just having fun in New York or California. It was going to make my life better because I want to be a teacher. We have kids following in our footsteps, and this is why we have to elevate the teaching profession. It is not lost on me that this year would have not been possible without the huge number of supporters and encouragers. I would love to mention way too briefly those who have sacrificed a lot this year to make these experiences possible. My wonderful husband, who has my four-month-old with him now. I, I hope it's going great, babe. Um, <laughs> my mom who watched four kids and a dog a lot when we were traveling. My school district, the Francis Howell School District, Francis Howell North, where I'm lucky enough to work. Um, the, my students for being flexible. The teachers unions were so grateful. Linda Dooling, Curtis and Stephanie, who planned an incredible night, but do incredible work all throughout the year too. Paul Katnick, who is so gracious to use teacher voice and incorporates our passion. Commissioner Van Dieven, who truly does feel like a teacher and we talk and she listens and she hears, so grateful. Everyone at DESE is incredible. The state board, thank you for asking hard questions and for making hard decisions for students and teachers. Our sponsors, Boeing and Bayer, thank you for standing up and saying teaching matters and is a profession we're willing to invest in. Legislators, thank you for opening your offices and letting us come have conversations with you. And my mentors, when I think of the people who were part of the journey this year, I am overwhelmed with gratefulness. Speaking of mentors, those who have gone before me have done such incredible work, and their work, our work, is far from over. They are still working for students, teachers, and the profession. And there is no doubt in my mind that those who follow, Misty, I'm thinking of you right now, will do the same for Missouri students and teachers. Misty, my charge for you is to make the current classroom a better place for students and teachers, and also to remember that the work you're doing is laying ground for future students and teachers. And please remember, especially in those times where the magnitude of the work seems big and overwhelming and you can feel small, not that that will happen to you, that you have a whole bunch of people, those of us here tonight, among others, who will be cheering for you the whole way. Thank you so much for the privilege of serving Missouri students and teachers this year. It has been an absolute honor and joy. <laughs>